everybody, how you doing? I hope you're all doing it really well. Welcome back to my channel and to another midweek meals. You guys know I absolutely love filming these and I really hope you enjoy watching them along at home as well. So this week we have got some tacos. We've got a curry pie, sweet potato and sweet corn fritters spaghetti bolognese and homemade pizzas. So that's what we've got going on this week. Lots of delicious dinners. So if you're joining along at home, I'm gonna leave all the ingredients and the recipes down below. If you have already clicked subscribe, thank you so much. If you haven't, you can click it down below as well. Give the video a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So tonight is taco night, it's taco Tuesday. You know we like that kind of vibe. So we're gonna do a Mexican black bean style tacos. Dead easy, super tasty. I'm gonna show you the ingredients. So for the tacos, you're gonna need some black beans. These are just some Aldi black beans. Some taco shells, pick these up in Tesco. We've got an onion and garlic dip, some peppers. You're gonna need some spices. We've got some chili powder, some salt. We've got some a Caucasian spice, sorry. Cayenne pepper, chili powder, Smoked paprika, which I absolutely love. Got some of this Spanish smoked paprika. Some tomato puree. We also have a green chili, so they're gonna have a bit of kick. Some fresh garlic. We're gonna do some mushrooms and some tomatoes. And then we're gonna have a bit of a side salad going on as well. So, let's get cracking. I also forgot to mention you're gonna need an avocado to make a guacamole and a red onion to start off with sauteing and slicing. So, those two things as well. <laughs> okay, so to start off, I grabbed a red onion and I just halved it, removed the skin, and cut this up into fairly small slices, like diced up. And then I added that into a frying pan or skillet with a little bit of the rapeseed oil, and I just sauteed the onions down until they were nice and soft. You don't wanna like burn them, so kind of like a medium heat is really where you wanna be at for these guys. And then I chopped up the yellow and green bell peppers just into thin strips. And then once the onions had softened, I added those into the frying pan and then just gave those a little stir. Then I added some of this Cajun season and this is from Aldi, it's really good. It's just a mix of all the nice Mexican spices. And then I added some of this smoked paprika, which is so good. And then I just finally sliced up one small green chili and added that into the pan. And then it was time to slice up some garlic as well. I just finally sliced this. I add this in now because I feel garlic has a tendency to burn. So I add that towards that mid stage of cooking. And then I just stirred all that together. Then I rinsed the black beans and added those into the frying pan with all of the peppers and onions and garlic. And just let those coat and cook for around two to three minutes. Then I added in some tomato puree around two teaspoons. And then I finally sliced up some chestnut mushrooms. If you're not a fan of mushrooms, you can leave these out, but I love mushrooms. And then I added those into the pan and then just stirred all that together and coated it in the nice spice mix. Then I added in some chopped tomatoes, around two tomatoes. These are fresh tomatoes. I just chopped those up and added those into the pan and coated them as well. And using the back of the spoon, I just pressed everything down just to kind of like make sure it was all getting nice and crispy. And in the meantime, I just added the taco shells onto a baking tray and popped those into an oven for around five minutes. And that leaves enough time to make the delicious avocado guacamole. This is just an avocado, some fresh coriander, some lime juice, salt, pepper, and chili flakes. And you just mash all that together and it makes the easiest, simple mashed avocado guacamole. It is so good. And that is your black bean tacos. That is literally dinner in, I'd say 20 minutes really fresh i served it with some lime wedges and some garlic and onion dip guys this is just so tasty of course you can pop whatever you'd like in i just did some lettuce some of the black bean taco mix some guacamole avocado lovely garlic dip oh my goodness so good and so easy Okay, so it's day two of the midweek meals, and this evening we are having a red lentil spaghetti bolognese. This one was Zara's choice because, why did you choose this recipe? Because I wanted bolognese, mm -hmm. and we've chosen to not eat corn anymore. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, we don't have corn vegetarian mints anymore, so this is going to be a substitute, I guess. Yeah, and we tried the mushroom version, I think this is mm, the yeah. kind of only other one. Right, I'll show you the ingredients. Okay, so this is the ingredients that you're gonna need. We're gonna need some spaghetti. You can, of course, do this with linguine or any form of pasta you would like. We need some celery sticks, olive oil, or we're using rapeseed oil just because that's all we've got. Um, two onions, carrots. We've got some tomato puree, 500 grams of red lentils. Don't worry, I'll leave all the ingredients down below. We need some bay leaves, some vegetable stock, Ooh, one vegetable stock cube, some garlic, 
and some cans of chopped tomatoes and then some vegetarian cheese to top it off. All right, let's get cracking. Okay, so to start off, I sliced up the white onion and put this into like smallish chunks. Then in a large dish, you can do this in a casserole dish or in a frying pan, I just sauteed down the white onions. I add salt to my onions as well. I feel like they soften down easier I like that. And then I just julienne some carrots. So I just peeled them and then chopped them up into small chunks. And then I added those into the skillet as well and then just gave everything a nice little stir. And this is the base of your sofrito sauce. So then I was added some celery. I'd wash the celery and again, just julienne this into small pieces and then added that into the pan as well. And then this needs to sweat down for, I'd say a good solid 15 minutes. I add quite a lot of salt because the sauce does need it. I also added a beer leaf too. This just helps intensify the flavor and a good splash of red wine. I feel like red wine in a sofrito sauce is amazing. In the meantime, I just made some vegetable stock. It needs one liter of vegetable stock in total. So once everything's softened down, add your vegetable stock and leave that to simmer. And this is gonna be your delicious, delicious sauce. So once that's simmered, add your chopped tomatoes. Again, constantly stirring. And I use a little bit of water just to rinse out the tomato cans. And this is your amazing bolognese sauce. Now it's time to add your red lentils. You can of course pre-wash these if you'd like. I don't bother, I don't feel like it's necessary. Stir in the lentils, making sure they're fully coated. And then this needs to cook for, I'd say, about 20 minutes. I added some tomato puree as well, just to intensify the flavor and a good pinch of black pepper. In the meantime, you can cook your spaghetti to packet instructions. We're using spaghetti, but by all means, use whatever pasta you'd like. Usually spaghetti takes around 10 to 15 minutes to cook, and that's it. That is your delicious red lentil spaghetti bolognese. We served it with some garlic bread, topped it with some black pepper, some fresh basil, some olive oil, and some vegetarian Parmesan cheese. And that is it. So tasty, so easy, and really, really filling. Okay, so it's the third meal this week, and we are gonna be making some delicious homemade pizzas. I'm very excited because I love pizza. Zara loves pizza. We're cheating slightly because we're not making the base, but I'm still gonna show you everything you need. So I actually picked these pizza bases up from Aldi. They're pre-made pizza bases. So great if you want to make them for like your friends or with your family or whatever, I guess. The means are going to do two pizza bases and I think they're like 80p, which is ridiculously cheap. We're going to do a topping of some chestnut mushrooms, a yellow bell pepper, some red onion. We're going to do a tomato, passata base, and then top it with some fresh basil and some mozzarella. So dead easy but it's gonna be delicious, let's get going. So to start off, I grab two pizza trays and pop those in the oven to preheat. This just helps the bases get nice and crispy. Pop the oven in around 200 as well. And then on a lightly floured work surface, I just roll out the pizza dough. Of course you can make your own if you'd like, but this is just such an easy dinner to do. So I just roll this out under a floured surface. And if you like a thinner pizza, you can of course roll this out even more. And then just using some passata, you can use whatever base you'd like. You can do a white sauce, you can do a sun-dried tomato base. I just swirled that around to make the nice pizza base and then added some yellow bell pepper. I love pepper on a pizza. Then I also added some chestnut mushrooms as well. That is looking pretty good. Zara just sliced up some thin red onion and I popped some pieces on the pizza as well. Of course, guys, pizza toppings are completely up to you. You can add meat if you'd like to. Um, you can keep this completely veggie, but I'm using some lovely buffalo mozzarella. I also grated some fresh parmesan on top as well. Added that onto the hot bacon tray. And then I made a kind of like a garlic oil to drizzle on top and brush the sides. So I just mixed one garlic clove with some olive oil and then brushed the sides. This just makes them go nice and crispy. And when it goes in the oven, the crusts just go this wonderful golden brown color, which is perfect. I baked the pizzas for around 15 to 20 minutes. I sprinkled them with some Italian herbs as well. And genuinely guys, so easy, so, so easy, but one of the tastiest pizzas ever and so cheap. Look at that, beautifully golden brown, cheesy and fantastic. And I finished it off with some fresh basil and a little bit more olive oil, but look at that guys, so easy. Again, pop whatever toppings you'd like on. You know pizza is so versatile, but it's so tasty. A nice midweek treat, definitely for you and whoever you are cooking for, or if it's just yourself. Zara made a garlic bread one as well, which is no surprise because she loves garlic bread. <laughs> 
So this is dinner four. Uh, we're actually doing this as a brunch, but you by all means can have this as a dinner. We're going to do some sweet potato and sweet corn harissa cakes with some poached eggs. Absolutely delicious. Perfect. It's like a lighter dinner um, and super tasty. I've made this recipe before, but I'm going to show you it again. We've customized it slightly and it's delicious. Let's get cracking. Okay, so ingredients you're going to need. Olive oil or rapeseed oil, depending on what you prefer. We've got a can of sweet corn. We've got some flour, I'll leave all the quantities down below. We've got some harissa, a sweet potato, We've got some coriander, you can use parsley if you're not keen on coriander, some balsamic glaze, and some two chicks egg whites, but you can use actual egg whites if you have eggs, um, and obviously some poached eggs to have on top. All right, let's get cracking. Okay, so we first started off by peeling these sweet potatoes and then I added them into a food processor with a grater attachment. This just makes it so much easier than standing grating the potatoes, but of course you can do that if you don't have one. Then I weighed out some flour and cut up some fresh coriander. Of course, you can use parsley if you'd prefer. Then I added the harissa into the flour with the coriander and then Zara added in the sweet potato. Then using the two chicks egg whites, I weighed out four egg whites and stirred all of that together. Of course, you can use regular egg whites from eggs if you'd like, just making sure all of the flour is coated. And then I added in some sweet corn. This just gives it an amazing texture and also a good taste. A nice solid pinch of pepper and salt and then just stirred all that together to make sure it's fully combined this is your fritter mix so you can pop this in a pan if you'd like and cook them straight away or you can dish them up cook them and then freeze them but I pop them in a little ramekin just to portion out the correct sizes and using a fish slice I kind of squish them down so they get nice and crispy on the edges they need to fry at like a medium heat in some oil for around I'd say five minutes on either side and then once they're done I take them out of the pan pop them on a baking tray and finish them off in the oven to go nice and crispy for around 10 minutes and in the meantime I just pop a pan of boiling water on the hob a splash of white wine vinegar and poach some eggs of course you can just leave these as they are but I love poached eggs with these they're just so good and the plate up I use some of this balsamic Madeira glaze it is so good it's a bit like of a vintage one but it's really nice and then I serve up the two fritters each top them with some delicious poached eggs a good pinch of black pepper salt and chili flakes and some fresh coriander and that is your dinner so good and so tasty Hello! So it's the final meal in our five midweek meals and today we're going to be making a curry pie. Now I've never had a curry pie in my life. It's going to be a vegetarian curry pie obviously. Lots of veggies. It sounds good. I know a lot of people like curry pie. Might be a bit weird to some of you but I'm going to show the ingredients. Okay so this is all the ingredients we're going to need to make the curry pie. Quite a lot of ingredients um, but a lot of this was just lying around in the fridge so don't feel like this is a recipe you have to make with each individual ingredient. It's more so what you've got lying around will work. So. It's going to be a puff pastry topping and then we're going to do a base of cauliflower, mushroom, courgette, carrot and then we're also going to put in some peas and some sweet corn. We've got some garlic going on, some garam masala, we also have a chilli lying around yet, yeah, chilli and coriander as well and then like the curry base comes from some of this which is the Pakas, um, Patak sorry, Madras spice curry base and then we're going to bulk that out with a bit of basata. And on the sides, we're going to do some spiced potatoes and some green beans. So it's going to be quite a heavy one, but um, yeah, let's get cracking. Okay, so I first start off by cutting up the potatoes and these just need to parboil. I leave the skins on just because I prefer them with them on. Pop the lid on and let them parboil for around 10 minutes. And then in a pan, I saute down some red onion in some olive oil. And then Zara just finely sliced up some courgettes. You can, of course, keep these discs whole or I just halve them so they cooked evenly. And then I peeled four carrots. You need about two carrots in total. And then into the pan, I added some garam masala and this just gives the most amazing authentic Indian taste along with a good pinch of rock salt. And then I julienne the carrots and then these need to go into the pan to soften up. I also added the courgette and the cauliflower in the meantime and this all just needs to fry in the most amazing, amazing garam masala which just gives us such a good, good depth of flavor. I also added in one whole green pepper. I just removed the seeds and finally sliced that up. Of course, you can leave out the pepper if you're not a fan of spicy food. And then I used some of the madras paste. I used around three teaspoons in total once the veggies had had time to fry off. And then look at that color. It's really starting to look more authentic. Then I added in two cloves of chopped garlic and then the chili. I also added in some sweet corn, gave everything a good stir just to get it all coated. 
and then I added in some finely chopped chestnut mushrooms and some frozen garden peas to give everything a good stir as well. And now it's time to add a little bit of sauce. I used some passata. If you've got some curry sauce lying around, you can add that as well. And then I added a good punch of fresh coriander. This just elevates the dish and gives it a wonderful, wonderful aromatic flavor. Then it was time to check the potatoes and they cooked perfectly. So I drained them off, added them into a hot roasting tin with some rapeseed oil, some salt, pepper, chili flakes, and some curry paste. And I gave that a good stir to coat the potatoes. These are your spicy Bombay potatoes, which is so good. And then I popped them into an oven for around half an hour to 45 minutes, 200 degrees until they're nice and crispy. In the meantime, I cut up a slice of pastry. This is puff pastry, roughly the same size as the dish. You can cook it in the same dish if your dish is oven proof. Just slowly laid in the pastry, making sure it was nice and tucked in around the edges and then pricked a little hole in the top to allow the steam to go through. And again, you can pop that in the oven once your potatoes have been in for around 10 minutes and then you're good to go. The pie bakes for around half an hour and you can dish up. These potatoes are so good. I just finished them off with some fresh coriander. And look at that pie, guys. It is absolutely delicious. Really, really filled to the brim with gorgeous Indian vegetables. I served it with some green beans and honestly, probably one of the best veggie dishes I've ever made. So flavorsome and so tasty. And that is your fantastic curry pie. So that's everything guys i really hope you have enjoyed these five super easy super tasty midweek meals if you have as always if you could click subscribe and give the video a thumbs up that would be amazing and i'll catch you all very soon bye for now